Hello, hello. Hey guys, happy Thursday. How is everybody doing? Khaled, graphic idea, hello. Suraba. Aisani. Gia Tirmea. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your names correctly. I'm terribly sorry uh, if I'm not. <laughs> Alizi. Christian, morning everyone. Make sure to smash that like button. Yes, that's a good idea. Smash the like button. It uh, it definitely helps um, the algorithm and maybe maybe punch the streams up a bit higher. Inspiration. Here for the vibes. Nice. A lot. Hello again. Got Kubong. Sema, or as we're now going to call you Sema, Sean, according to Leo. I can't believe you did that the other day. That was so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> At least my, my name pronunciation might be slightly off, but Leo calling Sema Sean, that like that takes the cake, I think. Paul Dixon, afternoon all. Hey, Paul. Good to see you again. Popinda, she's uh, gracing us with her presence. Leo and Poppy. Oh, no. Leo's here again. Oh, no. <laughs> Mother's sister is coming today, but I'll watch until they come. Okay, amazing. Or when they arrive, you can just be like, I I'm sorry. It's it's lovely to see you. I'm just I'm I'm on a stream. I'm watching Dansky. <laughs> Stephen, hey Dansky. Hey peeps of chat. Hello, Stephen. Dilshan, aka Maxart, good to see you, man. I missed you guys. Ah. Oh. We missed you as well. I, you know, I was actually thinking yesterday. I was just thinking. I haven't seen Dilshan for a while. I hope everything's all right. Am I right in saying that you said you were moving? You were moving um, house or into a new place? Hopefully I've remembered that correctly. And if I have, um, how's it gone? Has it gone smoothly? I think sometimes with moving, it never really does. But uh, Design Dynamo. Hello, Dan. How are you? I'm fantastic. I am really, really good. Looking forward to this. This is going to be fun. I thought we would start with um, just just picking up from Tuesday. I, I, so many people submitted some great work, and I you know I never get to enough of it. I get distracted and I waffle on. So I thought we'd just kind of do a bit of um, a design review on a few of those, and then I don't know, just kind of freestyle. Maybe do some illustrative stuff, um, some icons. If anyone's got any ideas, Thursday's kind of all, always a bit more sort of loosey goosey. We we'll just kind of keep it uh, keep it open. Just basically have a bit of fun and, uh, I don't know, design some stuff. Where is Leo? <laughs> oh, goodness. If you see if, if you see someone called Leo in the chat flooding it with emojis, that's my boy. <laughs> He's here, but he doesn't have access to his account as we are at the school pickup. Okay, good. Right. We're good for about 20 minutes then. Yep, it's still settling down. Hopefully can get back to my daily routine. Yes, routine. Routine is always good. Routine is always good. Right, let's whip this one up. We'll start with this one. Also, um, <laughs> quick Photoshop PSA. So I've been doing some work in Photoshop recently, as you probably might imagine. And I don't know if anyone else is experiencing this or if it's like a Mac only thing but in photoshop 2024 the smoothing at the top you know where you can kind of smooth with the brush you know because obviously i've got my very shaky hand <laughs> so uh the smoothing's like ghosted out and i can't use it if i go back into photoshop 2023 no issues whatsoever so i don't know if there's like a a Mac specific issue, or if any of you guys have experienced that. Also, the liquify, filter liquify in 24 seems completely balked. It won't work. 23 is all good. So I had to just kind of throw that out there to see if anyone else is experiencing this, or maybe I've just, maybe I've buggered something up and uh, <laughs> gone wrong. Something's gone wrong somewhere. I don't know. Elgato, I'm new here. Saw some of your videos in Illustrator and loved them all. Thank you for the lessons. You're welcome. Amazing. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we've got to talk about Neon. Oh, uh, yeah. I was I, ba basically the other day, I was just looking at my um, my son's periodic table. He's got one stuck up on the wall at home and me and Poppy were talking about Neon and I didn't realize that Neon is actually a gas and it's on the periodic table. And I was just like, 
I, I to me neon is just like photoshop it's like glow effects on signs and things i didn't know it was actually on the periodic table kind of embarrassing to admit but you know it's true there was me thinking i was moderately intelligent and it turns out that just isn't the case hey dansky what's up hey zach good to see you man Here's a, here's a little challenge. Does anyone know off the top of their head without using Google what the the two letters are for neon on the periodic table? I'm trying to implement an S in the shape of a bulb and I can't do it. Can you tell me how to do it? Oof, S in the shape of a bulb. S is a pain to d draw. Like an S is a tough character. If I ever need to draw like a custom S, what I do is I, I kind of find a font that has the, the aesthetic that I want to have in my S, so whether it's kind of script, sans serif, whatever, and I will then usually kind of trace over that with the pen tool so at least I know that I've got the kind of the, the basics right. Because if you make the top of the S and the bottom of the S the same size, sometimes it can just look top heavy. It's just really weird. So in some, uh, with some fonts, you kind of make the, the top of the S slightly smaller but if you're kind of going from an existing font and you trace over it as at least a starting point, if you're like me and you don't have like a super in-depth knowledge of typography, then you can kind of sidestep the issues and the other mistakes that you would make. Once you've got the kind of base path drawn, then you can kind of go and have fun and refine it and tweak it. Oh, Dilshan says it's a Mac problem. Haven't experienced any issues on PC. Yeah, I just I try to understand if it's a Mac problem or if it's a me problem. Have I like broken it? We can't see your screen. It's just black. Oh, what's going on, Dan? Oh, yeah. Hang on. At least we haven't started yet. It'll kick it. There we go. For some reason, every time I open OBS, it just needs a kind of I have to like click on the screen thing and then it um, it just kind of has a bit of a kickstart. <laughs> Thank you for that, Christian. That would have... Uh, we can see you in a bubble. Well, there you go. As long as you've got my ginger face, that's all that matters really, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, my, my uh, ability to um, be a streamer is tin pot as ever. Any, any... Design Dynamo says N-I. N-I, that's not... Oh, that's something else, isn't it? I think N is nitrogen. Give my regards to Leo and Popinda. It's a noble gas. Yeah, I mean, I learned that the other day. I don't even know what a noble gas is. Back to school for me, I think. <laughs> That's a really good point. <laughs> Gutrubong says, to be fair, when have we ever needed to use the periodic table as adults? That's That's a very good point. Um... I think I think Moosh, who I don't know if she's here now, but she might join in a bit, um, works for a I think she said a chemical company. So maybe it's more relevant. But yeah, I think the vast majority of us don't really need to know the periodic table. You know what? I think the 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 only knowledge I really need of the periodic table is oxygen. Good. That oxygen. Yeah, I breathe that in carbon dioxide come out. Trees are important for survival. Um, that's my chemistry knowledge. Unless you want to go into uh, a different field. But um, yeah, I can't really remember much of it. That was chemistry and physics. Physics was kind of interesting. You know, when you, you, you get the, the Van de Graaff generator, I remember that, remember that one. The, like, the metal dome you put your hand on and your hair stands up on end. That was kind of fun. But uh, OBS needs its coffee. Yeah, me and OBS. Leo says hello. I'm very well, thanks. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Semra and Leo, you've bonded. Let's make a stylized elements table. Well, yeah, maybe we could take some of the letters and then do something with the letters, maybe. I don't know. That could be quite cool. But anyway, I've, I've whipped this up now. So let's just kind of review a, review a few things. We'll kind of get warmed up, see if anyone else joins. And uh, yeah, then we can, we can jump into Illustrator. Moosh! I am here. Lol, I do work for a chemical company, 
but I don't know much about any of it either. <laughs> and there was you laughing at me the other day in that comment. <laughs> oh, good. It's not just me then. Ooh, okay, right. I love this as far as a mock-up goes. This is really, really nice. Just trying to figure out where the... Yeah, so the first thing that I I notice is... Well, there's a few things, really. And correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just looking at the lighting in the shadows. So I'm trying to kind of figure out if these shadows have been photoshopped and where the light's coming from. So I don't know. What do you guys think to the shadows on this? I'm just kind of looking at it. And if I just grab a yellow. So where's the light coming from? The light seems to be coming from this direction. Maybe a bit higher. Maybe a bit higher than that. Something like that. And then it's casting the shadow here. So the, the shadow, this one here, <clears throat> this first shadow, I think that relates to this one here. I'm, it, it, there's something about the lighting and the shadows and the perspective that just feels off. Do you know what I mean? Like this shadow here relates to this and they're quite close to each other sort of quite close proximity. But this shadow here, I think that relates to that. And it feels like they're too far apart. I feel like this shadow should kind of come up here just a little bit more. But then this one here, that doesn't appear to have a shadow. And I'm not sure if they've just tried to kind of merge, you know, these two into a single shadow. But I've got three products and two shadows. Do you know what I mean? Like there's there's something there that that doesn't look right to me. I submitted this wrong PSD, the one you are showing. Oh, is this is this yours? Hang on. Is this the, is this the wrong file? Is it? This is the only one I've got. Light seems from bottom left corner. Shadows should be at the back. Yeah, I was going to say I, I started bottom left. <clears throat> and then I was just looking at this one over here. And there seems to be a little highlight up in that corner. And it just that's what kind of led me to think it was just coming up a bit higher. <clears throat> And I don't know, yeah, if the lighting was coming from the bottom left, like up here, the shadows will surely wouldn't be cast in that particular way. It's a tricky one. Because I was trying to ascertain if they would if they were drawn. Yes, this one is the wrong file. It's just a mock-up file. Okay, well, I mean, it, even if it's the wrong file, it, it's fun to just kind of look at it. A lot of the things in this file, they're, they're kind of things that... Um, that we've looked at before, very similar sort of things when it comes to mocking up products. So we've got the um, the graphic here. Can I can I move that? No, it's very multi-layered. Okay, so if this if this is your file, how did you create this? Rather than me just sort of um, making assumptions if you're able to kind of share with us how you created this mock-up did you draw in those shadows or are they real shadows from a photo yeah i think there's a couple of things here like the highlight on the left edge it looks a bit too kind of perfect and a bit too drawn it would have like a little bit more kind of spillover and be a bit softer onto this part here and the same here for the shadow as well. You can see that sort of hard line. So I feel like you wouldn't necessarily have that. And then you might have it even darker on this, this edge bit here. <clears throat> and actually on this side, you might even have like a slightly darker edge 
which kind of helps give it that sort of rounded depth. You know, so you've got dark, dark, and then light in the middle, and then you might have your highlight kind of around here. If I just if I just try and sort of illustrate what I'm waffling on about. I'll have a go. If I just if I just grab a grey and try and use a soft brush. <laughs> this doesn't always go according to plan when I try and get the creative on the spot, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's do opacity instead. Yeah, so if I just fill that with grey. Actually, no, let's use black. Black is better. There we go. We'll fill that with 30% or 35% black. Do a bit more around there. And then maybe I'll go another one on the very edge. Really kind of subtle. And then we'll go white. Bit too, bit too much. We'll go for ten percent. And then we're there in another ten percent. And of course, you've got to play around with the values. And essentially, what it does is it kind of helps sort of give it a little bit of depth. Now, obviously, this is flat, so what I would need to do is just warp this out of shape a bit. How can I do that? There we go. You're going to let me pull from... There we go. Nice. Hopefully that's helpful anyway. It can... Um, I put the lighting straight in the middle there, actually. But, actually, if I go back a few steps... Let's go back a few steps. We'll add that highlight. Over there, on the left. I've done this kind of centrally, whereas actually it might be a little bit different for this particular example. Whoa, there we go. So you might get something like that, and uh, the light might spill over a little bit more on this left edge. It's a, it's a tricky beast, lighting. So you might get something like that, and then you could, uh, again, go and warp it. The best thing to do is look at a reference image of a real photo. And you see what I mean? It just kind of, it, it helps it look less flat, but it just gives it like a bit of, um, it's a bit more gradual, and it kind of gives it a bit more depth. It's the same with retouching as well. If you've got like a subject and you're putting them in a scene, the subject's got very flat lighting. Something that um, I've seen Benny, if you watch Benny production, something he does really, really well is that he will go and add loads and loads of shadows. And specifically, you can add shadows to the edges of something that is, is flat and then add some highlights in key places as well. And it just helps give it like a bit more depth, if that makes sense. What about a chill background music? <laughs> we don't have any... We don't have any background music set up. There was that time when I started blasting out Avenged Sevenfold by mistake. Then everyone's in the chat saying, turn the music off, we can't hear you. That was fun. And that video obviously got copyright claimed. <laughs> Could you give your thoughts on my project I showed in the last stream? Which one was that? Dynamo, which one was yours? Oh, wait, yeah, we did that one. <laughs> we did that project on the last stream. I don't know. May maybe you kind of jumped off before then. We did do that, the, the passage one. Yeah, Moosh, Benny is awesome. I'm, his work is incredible, yeah. Little glint with the highlights as Christian. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, it like depends on the, the angle and the material and, and what you're doing. But yeah, you can sort of just brush in like a highlight. It doesn't have to be like a strip down. It obviously depends on the shape of it. Um. For MV Sage, I think I've submitted another file too. Yeah, I've not got another one. It's just the one PSD, unfortunately. But that's okay. That's okay. There's um, 
there's still loads we can kind of cover here the logo as well i would make this is something that i do with logos kind of because they usually are in a vector format they come in super crisp and what i would typically do is just go filter and then just blur or blur more it just sometimes adds like a little bit of softening to the logo and it can just help things sit a bit more realistically the same with um products as well you know when you cut out with the pen tool things can look perfectly clean and in reality they just don't look like that so even if you there's a bunch of different ways you can do this but even if you just run a blur brush along the edge obviously it's not going to work here because uh well if i sample all layers on a bit of work no, it's kind of messing around with the noise. Uh, ooh, could I do this? No. <laughs> There's too many layers. It's going to muck it up. Um, unless I flatten it like a cheeky sausage. There we go. Okay. So do you see what I mean? This is obviously a manual way of doing it. There are um, better ways that I think I've done videos on. You can see there, just blurring that edge. And when I zoom out, you've got perfectly clean and then slightly blurred. I know it's a tiny detail, but if you are doing something that's going to be printed on a massive sign, people are going to walk past it with it kind of blown up, you know, by 10x the size that you're looking at it on screen. These sorts of details are the kind of things that do matter. So you can see here, I've got these sort of, the edge kind of looks a little bit clean and jaggedy. And I could just go around and blur the edge. And it doesn't have to be that much blur. This is quite blurry. But you just want something really subtle that just kind of gives it a bit more realism. Something else I also like to do is um, with the background. I don't know if they've done it here or not. Mm. You can keep it solid. But for me personally, if this was like being shot in a studio, you know, there would be... There would be a light over here on the left. Where's me? Where's me brush tool gone? So like we said at the beginning, there is a light coming from this direction somewhere. That's a, I can't even draw arrows. There we go. So that's an arrow. <laughs> so there is a light source coming from there. Sometimes what you might get is with the background, you might want to take into account that light source. Unless you kind of got it set up where the light is at an angle where the background does look a totally flat color you know you might actually want to change the background into a gradient and i'm going to kind of try and fudge this here just brush it in and obviously you do it to the background not necessarily it doesn't need to spill onto the product in such a dramatic way so let's just try and isolate that to more of the background But sometimes just adding like a little bit of a gradient going from the light source being over here to to dark, it can just really kind of help sell that scene. It's something I do all the time because, you know, in reality, when you're photographing a product, usually you're using studio lights for something like this. There is going to be a light somewhere, whether it's above or you've got lights on the side. And invariably with a solid background, you're going to get that light spill over onto the background. And so personally, at least, I try to kind of incorporate that into it as well. I've sent you two projects. I've only got... What's the second one? Hmm. If you've got the file name... Oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. Ah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. All right. Coffee cups. Brilliant. Um, thank you, uh, Graphic Sage, for sending that one in. And even though it's the wrong file, hopefully all that waffling on from me was helpful. Um, right. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do another one and then we'll start designing something. If you've got any ideas for things you'd like to see me uh, work on today or designs, uh, fire away. And we'll, uh, we'll just kind of freestyle it and have some fun. Doki, Mama's Kitchen. Reese, hey friends. Dan, I would like to know one thing about you. Just one thing, one specific thing. Okay, go for it. What would you like to know? 
Mama's Kitchen. <clears throat> okay, initial impressions. I like I like the way the word mama's is written. You've got the heart as the apostrophe. Sometimes a heart in a in a design can look a bit cheesy. Um, I think here it kind of works. You could even kind of make it a slightly more apostrophe-esque. That's just like a real kind of raw observation. So let me grab a hard brush purely just as an idea. You could, just to kind of move it away from that sort of cheese a little bit. Ooh, let's actually get my flow back up. That's at least just my opinion with the, the kind of, you know, I think hearts can work in designs, but it's something that can sometimes look a bit cheesy. Do you know what I mean? So I would I would probably just make it a little bit more apostrophe. So it's not like a real super, super obvious heart. Do you know what I mean? If you've got a heart and an apostrophe, just blend them together a bit more. Just with a little kind of little tail like that, something like that. And uh, yeah, I like this. I would probably customize the lettering a bit more as well. Like for me personally, I'm not sure. Was this a was this a particular font, or was this kind of hand lettered? Because if, if, it, if let's just say it's a font and I'm bringing this in, there's a few things that I would just love to kind of tweak. And that would be this kind of curve here. There's a lot of curves in this design and it flows really nicely. But I did this line here just seems a bit too straight. Do you see what I mean? There's like a lot of flow and then it kind of feels too straight. So I would probably want to just manually curve that up now I'm drawing this in Photoshop and my smoothing is broken because of 2024 that's what I'm going to blame it on anyway so I could make this line a lot smoother but uh, sorry you're just gonna have to put up with my slightly unsteady hand yeah I don't know if that's helped too much maybe this bit here maybe um just bring this one in a bit. I'm just trying to add a bit more curvature so it's like less, less uh, flat. Do you see what I'm trying to do? Hopefully this makes sense. There we go. And I would probably go through and do that for any other bits. Uh, there's not too many bits. Even like here, you know, the little flick on the M and the A, they curve a little bit more. That one just feels a bit too, a bit too straight. And then the S as well. Oh, I suppose that needs to be separate from the A because you've got the apostrophe. So yeah, that wouldn't, wouldn't make sense to be connected. Also, I'm not a massive fan of the M. I'm not sure if that's meant to be a heart as well. Uh... I don't know. Yeah. Personally, I wonder how it would look if you were to take this M here and just kind of blow it up. I know it's more of a lowercase M, but I wonder if that could be modded into an uppercase M. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. If it, it feels like it feels like this was a font and it feels like this was kind of drawn. This was drawn to match the font. And this is sometimes um, like on the other project, I think I mentioned, you know, you did the P and then the the word acid or the other part of the word was kind of done in a different font. And it just it didn't kind of mesh with the P as, as smoothly. I feel like this kind of fits this custom. I'm guessing custom M fits with the sort of flow of the lettering. But I think it needs to feel a bit more, a bit more like an M. Um, and I think it just needs refining in a few key places as well. And I think this is this is where I would probably struggle as well, That where that typographic knowledge comes in. 
or in my case, lack thereof. So what I would do is I would study the M from this font here. So um, as with like a, a lot of um, this sort of style of lettering, when you go down the strokes as a kind of general, general rule, when you go down, the strokes are thicker. So let me just get a brush. Yeah, on the downward stroke, it's thicker. And then on the upward stroke, it's thinner down. So just imagine you're drawing the letter up, thinner, down, thicker, and then up, thinner on the flick. Obviously, that's very, very broad thing. But uh, that's something I learned a while ago. And it's kind of helped me at least, at least if I'm trying to sort of do that kind of um, calligraphic style lettering, that's something that's stuck in my head. Down is thick, up is thin. So when you're doing this letter here, you can see the width is it's sort of a bit unpredictable. It, it's inconsistent as it goes on. So if I were to kind of um, do the M, I would probably base it more on this M here so it kind of fits a bit more. But then try and maintain that down. Down is thicker, up is thin, down is thicker, up is thin. Something like that. Obviously, that's awful. Please do, don't do that. But yeah, I would probably start with the M that they've already got here with the font because it's, you know, more, I think, more typographically correct. And then I would make it bigger and then you can sort of tweak it from that basic M. Does that make sense? So you could, you might, um, you might choose to keep this part here. You're like, oh, yeah, this part's great. this part here but then I, I kind of want it to sort of loop back round down there so I might just redraw this bit do you see what I mean so you've kind of got a very similar shape there to there but you've sort of cheated it a little bit in that you have just kind of reused this part of the M and made it bigger and then you just draw in the part that you want to kind of make it feel custom does that make sense Reese says would you think the heart needs to come down closer to the letters Oh, you mean the apostrophe on the right? Yeah, you could do. You could do. You, I think with the shape of the heart with the little flick, you could probably, yeah. I think you're right, Reese. You could sort of nestle that in a little bit more. You just kind of nudge it down so it sort of tucks in that space quite nicely. That's probably a good shout. I modified the M a bit. Could you please share this? back to me i'll keep the stream up so you've got the stream um i, I wouldn't i wouldn't share my scribbles this is just me kind of doing random scribbles but yeah the tech the technique that's what i would i would do is blow up use that lowercase m blow it up keep part of it and then just delete this bit on the left and then redraw that if you wanted to or just keep the m as it is um yeah and then any lines that you're not happy with Let's just say you didn't like this A. You could just kind of get the pencil tool in Illustrator and just, you know, redraw over it. And just kind of essentially refine it. Um, yeah, and that's just talking about the word mamas. The word kitchen, I'm not loving the font. If I'm totally honest, I'm not loving the font. And I'm not sure if this is a me thing or if, if you guys have an opinion on this as well, but... I kind of saw this when we did the logo for Poppy's travel business. Um, you know, we had the word travel in that delicious font, Gelato Lux, which I just kind of, me and that font, we we uh, we get on like a house on fire. I love it. It's a good font. Really nice. And when I was trying to pair that with another font, if I was picking another font that had like a similar style, um, you know, like the letters flowing, a real kind of nice script font or something. It just felt too much. You know, you've got two very, I don't know what the right word is, like very kind of ornate, very kind of not decorative, but do you know what I mean? They're not your, just your bog standard sans serif font. They're like a very, it's a very sort of specific style and then you have like a different one as well and it just looked a bit messy so what i did in that instance was 
And what I would take from that and do here is change the word kitchen to just a sans serif font. So, or, or it could be a serif font, just another font that is a, a little bit simpler and less kind of decorative. Um, and, and personally, I don't like that font anyway. That's just like my opinion. But if I were to kind of just throw in, oh, I can't spell. Let's just see how it might could could look. What have we got there? Archie for oh, that's from the stream the other day. Why not? Why not? We'll keep that one. I'm sure that you know you could definitely pick a a different one. But if I were to just kind of throw that in right now, and something you could even do actually is so like I said, limited typography knowledge, but I can I can clearly see, you know, how this this cursive style S is done. You know, it's right, you go start here, it loops round and then that. Okay. So now I know that that is kind of the, the general form. I could have a go at redrawing this S. So it kind of starts here and then maybe comes a bit lower like that or just kind of stretch the letter, like whatever you can get away with. Essentially, the goal is to bring it down more. So you kind of create this sort of bookend here and here, and it gives a nice space to just kind of nestle in that word. Do you see what I mean? Like it tucks in in the ummer part, like it tucks in right underneath this. Um, so it just might help it fit together a bit better. And you could also, I mean, again, personal preference, you could also use a different color. So something that isn't, say, black. Something that is, um, you know, obviously still needs to have enough contrast, but it doesn't have to be like block black. You could pick a color that in this case might complement the background. Maybe. I know the logo isn't always going to be displayed on the cream background, so you've got to kind of see how that color would look when it's mocked up in different scenarios on different things. But yeah, that's, that's probably what I would do. And I would remove the illustration. Personally. Sema says, maybe the dot on the letter I in the word could be a heart. Yeah, I think you've got to be careful having two hearts. And I think having a heart as a dot on an I, that, I think that's for me where it kind of gets a bit cheesy. You know, it's, it's the sort of, oh, you got the letter I and you got the heart. I, it's something that I've just seen time and time again. And I think I think using it in a sort of slightly more clever way as the apostrophe is just it's a bit different, but it's more subtle as well. It's not like really in your face. Do you know what I mean? Rest in peace, spelling. Hey, James. Oh, James. James, right. <laughs> there we go. I've, I associate you, James, with the segue now. So um, if you enjoy these streams and you want to learn everything I know about Adobe Illustrator, this is the Adobe Illustrator Masterclass segue. Absolutely. Yes. This is my Illustrator Masterclass. It's the course that I launched last year, and it basically condenses all of my 17 years playing around with this software, making a bazillion mistakes, and it will just teach you the right way to use the different tools and pretty much all of these tools, not these tools, this is Photoshop, Dan. Come on. All of these tools over here, and then you've got tools under tools, and you think, oh, goodness, how am I ever going to learn that? Um, I, I will teach it to you in the Masterclass. So that is uh, a link to the course. And do, 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 do. also, if you sign up to my mailing list, then you get a code for 15% off the course as well. And of course, with the course, you get access to the community and um, you can basically DM me anytime you like and uh, I will be there to help. So it's um, it's basically not just a course. You basically get me on speed dial pretty much. So, And I like teaching and I like helping people learn. So uh, I'm always uh, always there to help out. Okay, that's a good question. Jordan says, advice for learning how to use graphics tablets for someone who has not used one. Yeah, so if you know someone who has one, ask if you can borrow it. 
if you don't, I would grab a cheap one. Uh, there's loads on Amazon. There's some, you know, um, I think there's there's quite a few that are really cheap. Like, you know, the XP Pen have got some very reasonably priced ones. They're, even Wacom, they've got their, like, I think it was the Bamboo, I think. Um, there's another brand. Is it uh, Gaumon? Gaumon? <laughs> I'm not sure how you say it. And they have a lot, of, a lot of good reviews. There's, you know, I've not used those personally. I've used the whack on bamboo a bit, I think. But um, even a small one, it's it's basically even if you get a small graphics tablet and it's relatively inexpensive, what you get for that is you can use it as a mouse replacement for a lot of design apps, which is much more comfortable sometimes than using a mouse or even worse, a trackpad. So it's nice for that. But if you are doing any kind of illustrative work or um, Photoshop retouching, anything like that, you get the added benefit of pen pressure. So in Photoshop, um, oh, I'm in Photoshop. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, in Photoshop, if I'm if I'm drawing, let's say I want to like retouch something with a trackpad or a mouse, you only get one pressure. That is the pressure. Whereas when I'm using a um, graphics tablet or a pen display, you know, depending on how you hard you press on the the, uh, the screen or on the tablet will determine the thickness. So you can see here I'm pressing really hard and then I'm going thin again. And so if you want to sort of like brush in shading, oh, I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely beautiful. You know, you can just retouch and just brush in shading and I mean, it, and it feels nice as well, like retouching, uh, doing all that kind of Photoshop stuff um, with a trackpad just feels icky. I don't like it. Using a pen tablet is not only easier, but it just, just, I don't know, just makes me feel more like an artist or something. It feels nice. It actually just, yeah, it's a nice experience. So if you're not sure if it's something that you would like, then I would, I would probably start by just getting, um, uh, a relatively inexpensive graphics tablet or if you kind of like the idea of drawing actually on the screen then a pen display something like the xp pen um what is it the artist 12 gen 2 i think it's around about 200 pounds uk and that's where you actually draw on the screen um which is just amazing because it just kind of gets you it gets you closer to the work that you're doing and you can actually kind of do all the line work directly on the screen so you know it makes it a lot easier to kind of get smoother curves oh hello kai nice of you to grace us with your presence sir if they did want to use the illustration for an alternative mark or something could maybe use the m as the top of the chef's hat Ha <laughs> ha! yes that's a good idea yeah, I mean, that op that opens up a few different ideas. You could actually have the M as a chef's hat, maybe. That might take some refining to kind of get the line work in there. But yeah, I see what you're, I see what you're saying with that. That could be quite interesting. Let's get rid of my soft, fluffy brush. Yeah, I suppose you've got the sort of general shape there. <laughs> that could work. Obviously, you know, that's all one thickness, but play around with the line thickness. And somehow try and um, circumvent the details. Yeah, that could work. And I think the illustration could, you could use it maybe in promotional material or as a watermark or something. But I think the way it's attached to the logo and the style, it's very kind of, it almost looks like a, you know, like a, a character sketch. And to me, at least, it doesn't fit with the 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 chunkiness of the lettering. Or even if you were to take the chef's hat and just pop that on one of the letters like that, that's obviously terrible. But do you know what I mean? You You could get it in there. But I think at the moment, having the sort of full character illustration is quite detailed as well. So by the time I've zoomed out here and I've put that on a website. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I can read the word mamas, but I can't really see the illustration. 
So it's factoring in kind of how it's going to work at those different sizes. Oh, thank you, Christian. It's fantastic. And we are ready for the next chapter. Product design masterclass. Nice. Yeah, that, that would be... Uh... That would be interesting. I'm um, without spoiling too much. I'm I'm working on more courses at the moment. It's uh, it's exciting, and there's definitely going to be some Photoshop coming as well. There's too much stuff in my head that I need to teach. <laughs> Tim on Academy. I'm also making Illustrator tutorials. Nice. Our Illustrator's great. Like like if you are new to graphic design, just learn. Learn Illustrator, whether you know whether you enroll in my course or another course, or you watch free tutorials on YouTube. Like, just learn Illustrator. It's Photoshop's great for any kind of retouching work and really cool visual effects, but Illustrator you can do graphic design, UI design, logo design, icon design, brand design, <laughs> lettering, font design, <laughs> signage, vehicle graphics, merchandise graphics. Like, Illustrator is just like the best it's the sort of the best for graphic design really it really is it just it, it covers pretty much everything you know reese says if you have a mac ipad you can link them so it becomes a tablet oh yes that would be very useful so many hearts will mess up the whole design yeah i love the way you teach dance geek great job oh thank you michael my goodness, it's warm in here. Right. Let's turn the heating down before I melt into a puddle. <laughs> the kitchen has had a fire. <laughs> Jordan says, yeah, I'm thinking more of a display one. I do have an iPad Pro, so I potentially could use the Duet display. Yeah, Duet display app to turn into a tablet. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, just like Reese said just then. You know, I would try linking them up, and I mean that would be amazing because you know the uh, uh, what is it, Apple Pencil and the iPad has an amazing drawing experience. So you know, if you've already got the kit, then I would definitely, I would definitely do that. You've basically got a pen display then, and. You are a legend. Oh, that's very kind of you, Ivo. <laughs> Arnett, hey, good to see you again. Hello, all. It feels like the illustration is not going to really work in different messy backgrounds. That's a that's another good point as well. You know, as soon as I kind of take this logo and make it white and then slap it onto uh, maybe a photo or something, is that illustration going to stand out? Probably not, you know? That's why it's really, really good as designers to mock things up. Not just as part of a fancy presentation that a client sees and goes, oh, that looks nice. I like it. It's good for us as well, because then we kind of make sure that we've kind of covered all our bases. Yeah, it's going to work in one color print. Um, you know, reversed out. It works at different sizes on different devices. Is it going to be an app? OK, how, how's the app icon going to look? You know, you've got... Uh, so many different things. Are you going to review more designs? We'll do maybe one more, and then I want to design something. I'm feeling frisky. <laughs> frisky for some design. I'm not entirely sure what, though, so we'll, uh, we'll wing it. Ooh, this is cool. Let's open this one up. Nice. I like this. Um, is this... Okay. This is by Deckard. I'm not sure if this is like a famous statue or something. I don't recognize it. Does anyone else in the chat recognize the uh, the person pictured here? Think, 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 think. I mean, I like that. Yeah, thinking is um, thinking's very underrated. Very important. And they've got like a grain noise texture on the graphic, which I quite like. Yeah, it reminds me of like, you know, when you go to like, uh, well, I mean, if you're like me and you've got slightly wonky eyesight, you know, you go to the opticians and you've got all the kind of letters that get smaller and smaller. It reminds me of that. Um, 
this feels a bit more kind of like a piece of art rather than uh you know a a design kind of doing something sort of more functional for example um so yeah if it's if it's more artistic and you want to run the text to the edge hey who am i to question that for me personally if it was if it was mine i would kind of have a bit of breathing space left and right and then have it getting smaller that's fine um i would probably increase the graduation of the opacity so here it looks to be like about 95 percent white here you've probably got about 70 then it goes down to like 40 or something and it looks pretty similar there i'd probably just have that graduation especially these last two feel a bit more different so maybe make that bottom one even darker so you kind of get a proper graduation across all four also i'm not loving the texturing if i'm honest i think um I think I'll show you in a sec how how to do this actually with brushes. It's, it's it's a lot of fun. I love doing it. And then I would do all of these differently. At the moment, they're all just the same copy pasted. I think just spending an extra, you know, five or 10 minutes just doing a bit of brush work on each one so they feel unique would make a difference. Um, yeah, that's probably what I would do. So when it comes to like brushing uh lettering i mean i love doing this i love it let's type a word sausage there we go i have a grungy sausage nice chunky font we'll go with Ooh, fat rank absolutely and get rid of the tracking so let's bring down that spacing there we go sausage beautiful i would add a layer mask and grab the brush tool and remember, black with the brush tool will kind of remove. White will brush back in. So if you want to swap between removing and uh, and adding back in, just press X on the keyboard. So you can see here, my color picker is just flip-flopping back. Black remove, white adds back in. So with black selected, I could go and then pick um, a really tasty brush. What have we got? Got some grunge brushes here. If you want to know where I get my brushes from, 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 I can't speak. It's Invato Elements. They're amazing. I mean, there's a website called Brush Easy as well, which is great for free brushes. Like they do have some really, really good brushes. But um, this is Elements, and if you want brushes or you've got a subscription, you just go to where do you go? Add-ons, uh, brushes, Photoshop. And uh, there's a link in the stream description if you want to check this out. Uh, yeah, like grunt, like what is it? 10 grunge brushes. These are usually pretty high res as well. You've got arrows. In fact, actually, I'm going to search for grunge because I want a specifically a, a grunge. There we go. So we've got some grunge splats, grunge textures, just loads of them. And you just basically download the .abr file. And... Um, install it in Photoshop and then they then appear here and I think I should have some rather tasty ones actually so obviously there's quite a lot as you can see um my goodness ooh splatter ink grunge ooh let's try this one let's see how this looks there we go you see that just one click one click and you've got grunge and i could bring that size down to just get rid of the pixelation a bit so now i can actually see the brush and uh click click there we go grunge just like that texture labs intensifies oh yeah i mean if you like grunge effects and brushes you've got to check out the youtube channel texture labs like like that guy is like the king of this sort of stuff there's, there's, there's loads of techniques to create texture. But what you could do is like do this. And what I do is I kind of, oh, yeah, look, I've brushed into it. I've removed a bit too much of the lettering, flip to white, and then brush back a bit. So you're kind of brushing out, brushing in. And you can, yeah, you can use loads of these. Let's try the splatter brush or spatter. Give that a go. 
it depends honestly oh nice so you can just kind of use corners of the brush and then rotate it with the left and right arrow keys and just have your edit undo ready and kind of splat in a bunch of texture oh nice Ha, this is fun. This is so addictive, honestly. This is so addictive. Yeah. And it just makes it so easy. And the thing is, we're working non-destructively as well. So this is all on a layer mask. So I could still change the word to, um, I don't know, pineapple. <laughs> and it just keeps all of that texture. Or I can hold shift and click on the mask and it will just hide it. And um, if I muck it up, I just delete the mask. And then I can add a new one and boom, you know, I can start fresh again. So rather than working directly on the text, we're just doing that all on the mask. Cheeky sausage. <laughs> yeah, Dilshan, cheeky sausage indeed. Christian says context before you had black shading all over the M. So it looked like a fire happened. Oh, right. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you meant about the fire in the kitchen. Exactly. Yes, exactly. We're designing sausages today. We could do some sausage illustration if you like. Envitonis is good for templates. But Dan, where should we go if we want to learn about Illustrator? Hmm. hmm. Where could we go? Uh, I'm not going to waffle on about it again. There's my course. It will teach you everything I know. There's the link. Have, great, have a great time. Um, as you can tell, I'm terrible at promoting my own course. <laughs> I think I'm better at teaching than marketing myself. I, can, I think I can confidently say that. May I have my sausage extra gritty? <laughs> I wish there were a link for... <laughs> One could click for easy access to a great illustrator course. Nice, Ben. Nice. You're hired. <laughs> Much smoother than me. Oh. This is why digital artists have like 500 grush, grunge and foliage brushes. Yeah, I mean... The <laughs> The only the only downside with Invato Elements, and it's not really a downside, it's just that I feel like I have this need to hoard everything. So like I want all the brushes. So I've downloaded like so much stuff. They're fonts as well. Like um if I just go and browse their fonts and go, oh yeah, script and handwrit, they've got so many good fonts. I must have downloaded like I don't know, nearly like half of their library like they're just so good and you get it all in without sounding like an Invato sales pitch like honestly like it's just one of those subscriptions that I can't live without now because it's like how oh, you need you need brushes you need fonts you need uh some stock video for a video or you need I don't know graphics oh look patterns icons textures it's like just a go-to for everything but yeah, their fonts and their brushes is probably what I use it for the most. Um, oh, music as well. They've got a very good music library. <laughs> oh yeah, are you the same, Moosh? Yeah, Invato is a gold mine. The problem is it's also a time sink when you just want to download everything. Can we not just have a button on the Invato site that is just to download everything in one click? Even if it's like, I don't know, 20 terabytes of data, it's fine. I'll buy a hard drive. <laughs> it's addictive, honestly, it is. Hi, Dan. Can you suggest some websites to get free cool fonts apart from Google or DaFont? Yeah, I think... You've got Daft Font, you've got a thousand and one fonts. Um, I mean, I don't know. Has anyone else got any suggestions for free fonts, websites for free fonts? Because I, I sometimes use them, but in all honesty, I think I've just become like, I think the quality of the fonts you get on something like Invato Elements is just, it's better than the free stuff generally. And 
you know that you've got a commercial license to use it so you don't have to kind of faff around trying to find that out so i i guess i've become like more reliant on this because if i need a font i'm going to go to like adobe fonts or sometimes google but probably less um but usually this is this is my go-to alongside Adobe fonts because I can just kind of um, filter out for exactly what I'm looking for. And they just have such a great selection as well. So I've kind of, what I'm saying is I've gravitated away from the free ones because I have that subscription in place. So it's like, well, you know, I may as well use it. Do you know what I mean? I'm always late for events due to picking a font. Yeah, I know. It, uh, yeah, I think picking, I think picking and downloading fonts on on something like Envato is more addictive than the brushes. Oh, Reese, yeah, you use it as well. I know it's one of those things that once you kind of start using it, um, it, I, I can't envisage a world where I can't use it. I don't know. Maybe that makes me too dependent on it. I'm not sure, but it's just it is just great. It's great. Not having to worry about the commercial usage as well. That's a that's a pretty big plus. Hi Dan from the Dominican Republic. Hello. Ms. Ale. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Christian says creative fabrica and design bundles have good fonts and elements also. Okay, interesting. I don't know if Creative Market does any free stuff. Is there an option on Creative Market? Because they've got some cool stuff, but is there an option where you can kind of filter um, free fonts, for example? It's not something that I've used um, in a while. I got stuck in mock-up world as I am updating my portfolio website. I download way too many from Invata. Yes, on oh, no, Illustrator is awesome. If I could only keep one app and still function as a designer, it would be Illustrator. Anyway, yeah, so that was a whole load of waffle on Mama's Kitchen. Uh, Design Dynamo, hopefully hopefully that was helpful. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a good one. I enjoyed that, that dissection of this one. Okay. Reynard says, which one is creative for betting a look? Sorry, right. I'll start again. Slow down, Dan. Which one is better for creating a logo? Illustrator or Photoshop? Illustrator, definitely. Although it does depend. It does depend. Illustrator, typically, because it's, you know, vector-based software. And a vector is a graphic that can be scaled to any size without a loss in quality. Exactly, Dilshan. Yeah. So that's good. However, sometimes it, let's say you've got like a gaming logo, for example, and you've got loads of crazy effects and all this kind of, you know, gradients and metal effects and all this sort of more, I guess you could say realistic stuff or more artistic Photoshop for sure. Because you just, you know, you can get better raster based effect. Raster is kind of like the counter to vector in a way, you know, like if you take a photograph it's raster based. It's made up of pixels. You can only scale it to its native size. And if you go beyond that, it will start to degrade in quality. And that's when you get pixelation. <clears throat> so if you were going to make a logo in Photoshop, totally doable um, in the right circumstances, but just make it big. Make your document massive. Ideally, find out from the client the biggest use case they would ever have it. You know, uh, I don't know. I guess it's maybe unlikely it would go on the side of a building. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it would. It would go on a giant billboard. In which case you want to design it from the from the get go at that biggest size. So you can then scale it down. If you design it at like, a, oh, yeah, this will look good on a on an A4 poster. And then they say, oh, yeah, you know, this logo that you spent 16 hours designing, could you scale that up so it fits on a billboard? <laughs> and your answer will be no. <laughs> or yes, but it will look terrible. So, um, although you could probably use some AI program today to scale it up. But yeah, that, that that's a very long-winded way of saying if you're going to use Photoshop for logo design, just make sure it's 
uh, a big document to begin with, and you're definitely working at least at 300 DPI. Oh, Reese, was that in relation to Creative Market? So they do some free stuff, I think, which is weekly or monthly. Okay. Creative Fabrica and Design Bundles allow you to filter on anything and have dollar deals often, so it's great for fonts and mock-ups as well. Ooh, okay, interesting. That's a good point. Yes, if it is only for digital usage, Photoshop is fine. Um, of course, still make it like if you're going to make it um, in Photoshop, you may as well just make it nice and large because it's easier to scale down than it is to scale up beyond that native size. Which is more stable, Windows or Mac OS? Um, I, I mean, if I'm honest, Mac OS is just more stable for everything. That's just been my experience. I've used both my entire life. Everything just well, actually, no. <laughs> I say that. I say that and there's me moaning about my smooth tool not working and liquify being broken. So typically, I think as a moment to moment experience, I have fewer issues when I'm like connecting external displays, when I'm connecting tablets, that sort of stuff. I have fewer issues moment to moment. But um, as luck would have it, I seem to be on the Mac with the <laughs> with some of the tools not working and the Windows users don't seem affected by it. So, yeah. But I think I'm talking more broadly, like generally, like just moment to moment stuff. Like th things just sometimes kind of happen on Windows and it's like, why, why, why do I have to go through this? This shouldn't be a thing. And I think it becomes even more irritating when a big part of your career has been spent in UI UX design. So those little kind of user experience related hiccups, let's call them, they are especially irritating when you're when you've worked in UI design and you're just like, oh, oh no. <sighs> <sighs> yes, that was very helpful. Thank you so much. It means a lot to get good feedback. You're welcome. Fantastic. I'm glad that was helpful. I never turn my Mac off. <laughs> Your Mac, Ben, must be like, let me sleep. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, good point on that. Yeah, the Shape Builder tool is fantastic for vector logos. Mac has officially won back after Windows XP. <laughs> if I ever see windows xp reese it just gives me such nostalgia honestly like it takes me back to like 16 17 year old dan in his bedroom with his first computer opening up photoshop se photoshop 7 and just playing with filters and just literally like oh the nostalgia for for windows xp is just so real with me <laughs> The Mash Plays. Hey, man, really big fan of yours. Thank you very much. Oh, you're all so lovely. Oh, yeah. Um, the do, 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 do. Yeah, so th this isn't another segue. It, inspiration asked a question. So, like, yeah, <laughs> here's the course. If you're interested and if you sign up to my mailing list i don't send many emails out barely ever but the plan is to kind of send more useful stuff out in future but if you do sign up to the mailing list you get a code for 15 percent off the course so um and it's good it helps it helps me kind of stay in touch with everyone outside of youtube as well so if youtube decides to one day kick me off or they get shut down or i don't know something changes at some point five years down the line like I'm still able to kind of keep in touch with everyone. So that's why I'm trying to sort of build my mailing list as well and work on building uh, courses and things off of YouTube. Like I'm still doing YouTube. I love doing videos and the streams, but it's just, it's nice to have my own platform as well. Do you know what I mean? Wilonzi, hello there. It has been a while. Good to see you again. Reese says I did a whole 
social campaign sermon series for a church once i wish i still had the files it would bring you back <laughs> xp vibes <laughs> oh amen <laughs> oh, i'd love to whip up xp now i mean to be fair from a ui point of view windows 11 is definitely um definitely caught up they've made a lot of big improvements especially as far as the icons the ui in general the um explorer window when you're viewing folders and stuff it looks much cleaner and even the little micro interactions as you hover over things and click things so it's definitely gotten better how do you find inspiration for logo design i mean that's a really good question um how do I find it? Do you know, it's a really weird one. When I'm like working on like a, a project that I've set myself or something, I don't do many client projects now, but a lot of the projects I'm doing is for like YouTube videos or just for fun or um, if I want to do something for someone I know just to kind of help them out or whatever, like it's less client-based. Um, how do I find, I mean, generally these days I'm usually inspired all the time i've always got ideas just popping into my head so i, I don't know I, yeah it's a really it's kind of a, it's a good question it's sort of thrown me a bit actually i mean how does everyone else find inspiration for logo design like generally like what i used to do when i worked on the client stuff is i would look at other logo designs and i would immerse myself in it and i would um just immerse myself in other people's creative work, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, just that would really inspire me. Whereas I think nowadays, I've usually got so many different ideas for things that, um, thanks Dan, bye for now, have to reach someplace, have a great weekend everyone. Thank you so much a lot. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, nowadays, I'm just do you know one of the ways that gives me so, one of the, the the places that i get so much inspiration not just for design but for ideas to do with everything creative is i get a coffee in the morning and i go and sit in a field somewhere and this might sound a bit weird but i will take my shoes and socks off and i will feel the grass between my feet and so i'm just like physically connected to the earth and i i'm there's a place uh, just around the corner from us it's like it's a massive field and there's like a big sort of massive bunch of it's like a chopped down tree that's been kind of put together and you can just sit on one of the logs with a coffee in the morning sound of birds a bit of nature between your toes and yeah, you can like just even just you don't need to meditate per se just sitting in that sort of state of silence in nature having a, a coffee um, I, I've done it a few times and I get a noticeable rush of ideas. Oh, I could go and do this or I could do this. Do you know what I mean? Um, ideas for videos. It might be, could be anything. And so I think essentially what I'm trying to say is that quiet time when you just sort of are with your own thoughts and you're not bombarded with noise and social media notifications and emails and all that rubbish. That is when I get a lot of my ideas. And I think maybe that's something that isn't even talked about in the con enough in the context of design and creativity. You know, so yeah, sometimes it could be, oh yeah, look at logo design to get inspired. Sometimes it's actually like the 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 other side of it. it's like just disconnect from everything, and or even just kind of do that and think about the the logo or the project out in nature in silence and i don't know i'll be curious to see if anyone else has experienced that or if you go and try it and do experience it because for me personally i just kind of get ideas sort of um rushing into my head it just sort of gives me clarity you know like i can wake up in the morning and be like oh what 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 is my focus today and then after sitting in the field with a coffee it's like right i know i need to go and do this and then i just kind of get on and do it Also, that's a good point, Reynard. Yeah, just design a lot of things, look at a lot of videos, waiting to find which one that I want. Yeah, I mean, just even just designing things. 
Ilkin, hey, big fan of your videos. Oh, thank you. And thank you for joining the stream as well. We've got a few new faces here. It's good. My goodness, I've stumbled into an Apple support group shudder. I hope everyone's doing well. <laughs> Quick, look, there's a Windows user. Get him. <laughs> That's a good point, Lynette. Yeah, mood boarding or AI la, 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 or AI. I often try to make a logo that's better than any AI generated logo. Yeah. Ground oh grounding is a really solid thing. Definitely can see how that brings you inspiration. Yeah, my Reese, my brother's really into that kind of stuff. He's got he's got like I think they've got like a grounding bed sheet at home. He's got a grounding mat on his desk. I think sometimes he kind of rests his palms on it when he's working. He might put it on the floor and put his feet on it so he's kind of grounded. Yeah, he's really into that kind of stuff. Me personally, I just I like to put my feet on the grass. It's um yeah, it's weirdly pleasant and it's just it's so easy to do, you know. Does Mac have generative fill? Yes. Uh well, it's a Photoshop feature. So in uh, Photoshop 2024, so. Yikes. <laughs> it's fine. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, no. Leo's joined the stream. Hi, son. How are you doing? I get competitive with artificial intelligence. Nice. <laughs> What I'll do is listen to some good music and immerse myself in other creative work and later generate concepts. Oh, yeah, right, okay. I I'm with you there. Music is like, for, for, like, for me personally, music and Photoshop is probably my favorite thing to do um, design-wise. Like, I I'll show you this. Um, where is it? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hang on, I've got to find the files now. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, like the sort of photo art, photo, photo manipulation stuff is my favorite thing to do in the whole world. Um, I just, I absolutely love it. And doing that with some like really kind of epic, sometimes gaming orchestra, just oh, beautiful cello, choir strings, epic orchestra music in my ear. I could I can sit down for like 10 hours straight and barely move. It's probably quite bad, actually. You probably should get up and walk more. But I just absolutely get lost in the sort of um, what is it called? A flow state. And this is something that I produced um, <clears throat> uh, a couple of days ago. It's a game that came out today, actually, Helldivers 2. And I think I might give it a go later on. Um, and it's basically, that's where it started off. Just loads of kind of bits and pieces. So we've got some uh, arachnid-style aliens generated with mid-journey. We've got this piece of um, what looks like a jacket and some rocks that came from Unsplash. Their photos um space sci-fi character again that was mid journey with a rifle um a desert photo some explosions from invato elements they're like 3d graphics and uh even the flagpole as well the flagpole uh the flagpole on the original image was a bit rubbish so i made a flagpole in blender uh, it's nothing special it's more than good enough for kind of what what i need it for <clears throat> And uh, then just spent, I think it was seven and a half hours, thereabouts, just kind of retouching that um, into this. And it's my favorite thing in the whole world to do. You can see the blood splatter brushes down there. Those are the brushes from Invato Elements. Um, all the sandstorm brush effects and the kind of slamming the flag down and you've got the kind of sand and dirt and dust spewing up. They're all just kind of brushes that you can kind of stamp on. But, uh, oh, yeah, I absolutely, I had a lot of fun doing this one. Really good fun.
Got to go right now. We'll come back later if you're still on. See you, mate. Oh, cheers, Reynard. Good to see you. What are you trying to spell, Leo? One time I asked Adobe Firefly to generate a skyscraper and it gave me images of an excavator scraping a hole in the sky. <laughs> wow. Not quite what you asked for, eh? This is amazing. Captured the environment atmospheric. Oh, thank you, Christian. Yeah, it, yeah, I was sort of going for like a little bit of a movie poster. But again, I just had that idea of, um, you know, like I just had this image of a soldier making a last stand against a horde of bugs. And that was kind of the starting point. And so it, it was really just about this is the first step is just laying everything in there, you know. Uh, just by doing this, before you get to any retouching in Photoshop, just cobble it all together and look at it and go, does this concept have potential? And then if it does, then that's when you can kind of, you know, start working on it and and sort of build the scene out <clears throat> and do all the little pieces. So you could, it's, it's, it's fun with the layered PSD as well. You can see it kind of all come together and then you've got the, the lovely effects folder. That's just the, you can see the icing on the cake that just makes everything kind of epic and dramatic. I felt insulted. That's when I realized I should have typed in skyscraper as one word. <laughs> oh, I see you typed in like literal skyscraper. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think we're safe from AI for a, for a few more years. I think we've got a few more years before it in, in, but, yeah, inevitably destroys us all. <laughs> it's like the War of the Worlds movie poster. Oh, okay. I have to look that one up. Uh, War of the World's poster. Is that the new one or an old one? Maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. Hmm. Oh my goodness, how have we been going for an hour and a half already? Goodness me. Oh, they say time flies when you're having fun, don't they? Oh, the old one, okay. With the kind of hand holding the, the sort of the world, essentially. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Well, I can't believe an hour and a half has already gone. Um okay, just <laughs> Yeah, let's do a little bit of design. Um, would anyone like a logo? If you would, throw it in the chat and we'll just we'll spend just the last bit of the stream just kind of working on something. It's going to be pretty quick, but um, pretty swift design, but we'll, uh, it's good. It's good exercise, the old brain and creative muscles. So if anyone would like one, first come, first serve, go for it. Go on then, Jordan. What would you like? Do you ever struggle with bad combos of initial letters when designing that type of logo? Sorry, when you say that type of logo, which one are you referring to? I'm just going to see if Jordan wants something first, just because I, I did say first come, first served, and Jordan was just like, yes. <laughs> Coffee machine brand. Oh, okay. Coffee machine. Okay, let's grab a let's grab a reference image of a coffee machine. I don't do this enough, grabbing reference images. So, so helpful. Ooh, okay. 
Yeah, do I do more of an icon or a logo? It's kind of... Could straddle that line a little bit, I suppose. Right, let's, let's whip this up so you can see what I'm doing. Coffee machine. Hmm. And it needs to be something that's identifiable as well. We could have like a multi coffee machine, but something that's simple. That captures <clears throat> coffee machine within some sort of kind of simple form. You know, I want it to be recognizable. They all come in such, look at this one. They come in such weird shapes and sizes. So I'm going to try and find some commonality between these coffee machines. And we need a name. We need a name for this coffee brand. So, you know, what's it going to be called? If we're going to come up with a brand, hey, let's let's give it a name. I'll leave that to you guys. Suggestions welcome. Ah, I'll look at the coffee machines. Okay, so we've got the cup, we've got the dispenser, we've got possibly a touch screen, we've got the grinder that you kind of use with your hand. We've got the bit where the coffee sits on, and we've got the machine itself. So those are generally seem to be the elements. I'm going to grab this one. <laughs> Low res as heck, but you know. And normally I would sketch this in Photoshop, but you know, we're in Illustrator, so let's just do this here so okay we're gonna have the oh no don't use white Dan <laughs> it's no good come on give me black there we go right so we've got a coffee cup we're gonna have some sort of some sort of uh tray that it sits on some kind of dispenser here or we could have the handle maybe the handle could kind of go out that way The actual form of the coffee machine itself. It's almost like a face. <laughs> oh dear. Let's just let me just get rid of that. That's looking a bit a bit sus. Um <laughs> Okay, so we've got a cup. I mean this probably this might end up as more of an illustration in a kind of uh grind and shine. Oh, yes. <laughs> Copy press. Copy factory. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Grind and shine. I love it. I no idea if those letters are going to work, but we'll uh, we'll see what we get. Yeah, distilling something like um, this into... A simple mark usually takes time. So this might end up a bit more icon illustration oriented. Icons are generally a lot quicker to design. Because you could look at a reference image and just take the basic shapes, simplify them slightly, and you've got like an identifiable icon. Josie, hello. It's been a while. How are you doing? And we could have some coffee waves coming up there. And maybe some sort of... Dispense it no, there we go. And this is actually a pretty good exercise in basic shapes. So if I were to kind of do something like this, I would start off with a with a rectangle. Um if you're wondering why I'm looking down, I'm actually using the pen display. It's just a bit quicker to kind of work directly on the screen. So hopefully the audio is still alright and you can hear me uh waffling on. Yeah, so we don't need to pen tool this or anything. Just kind of get some basic shapes in. Essentially block this out. But of course you can sketch this. If you're not sure, um, sketch it. I'm just, uh, we're going to go a bit gung-ho. <laughs> Look, we're tight on time, okay? So I'm just going to kind of go uh, nice and swiftly. I've got some nice Avenged Sevenfold playing. Hopefully, um, you guys can't hear Avenged Sevenfold. I'm sure if you could, you'd let me know. <laughs> we can't have a repeat of last time. Okay, you're right. We need a cup. 
So circle. We're just gonna I'll make the cup slightly. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll start there with a half circle. Bring that up. <clears throat> That's a good cup. And you can see this is if you want this sort of clean style with Illustrator. A lot of it is about using the right tools and I'm just, you can actually do an amazing amount of stuff with just the basic tools. You really can. We don't need no pen tool or anything like that. Okay, so. Let's make that a bit smaller. Maybe make that a bit bigger. Yeah, that could be a kind of a, a interesting style of cup, I suppose. Let's just check that lines up. Oh, 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 oh no, naughty, naughty. There we go. Let's zoom in and just, there we go. That was a cheeky sausage moment right there. And whoever mentioned the Shape Builder tool earlier, as you can see, this is incredibly useful. Select everything you would like to be included in the Shape Builder tool extravaganza and we can just drag through like that i mean obviously that's a very uh did i do that wrong i think i did that wrong yeah <laughs> very stylized cut so let's do that again um there we go and <laughs> that's a bit more what i was going for again quite stylized you know the handle might not be that high but we could take that and we'll just round off those stroke corners. You can see the difference here. You've got the hard edges. I'm going to go for something a bit softer. And we can take that cup. Just plonk a copy of that in there. And this is the thing. This is, this is very kind of, you know, a logo doesn't have to be a literal representation. I'm just kind of doing this because I'm short on time. But from doing this... I might suddenly think, oh, actually, do you know what? I'm just going to take the cup and we'll kind of build that out into a logo. It's just one of those uh, one of those things. It's never a straight line process. Okay. So we'll select them and bring them in, maybe. We'll just round everything off. Nice. Let's pull that in there. Oops. Okay. We'll round off the bottom ones. There we go. That's our little our little dispenser. I think that cup's a bit rubbish actually. <laughs> I've gone the more I look at it, the more I'm going off of it. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh okay. And then, I mean, coffee goes in a straight line. It's a bit boring. Could we do something a bit more interesting? I don't know. Could we have the coffee, like, spraying down? Mm. Not sure. Yeah, not, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Um, hmm. It's probably a health and safety hazard there doing it that way. Okay, let's just park that. We'll leave that there. Design's never a straight line. We'll go to rise and... No, what was it? Uh, grind, grind and shine? Was that what it was? Yeah, grind and shine. I love that. Okay, grind. Get a nice ampersand symbol in there if I can. Um, for anyone who's wondering, this isn't my like normal design process. Uh, this is like condensed into 20, 30 minutes doing it live. So it's very, I guess you could say erratic, <laughs> somewhat, somewhat over the place. 
but you know sometimes it's good it's good practice it kind of puts a bit of pressure on you gets your brain kind of like a muscle i guess you're sort of exercising your brain a bit josie says like a water drop being busy with life <laughs> oh yeah oh tell me about it life does get busy do two drops coming down slightly offset oh i see so staggered you got one then the other hmm yeah, coffee machine. I mean, maybe we could actually make the logo more into a drop. A coffee bean in a drop. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Maybe. We'll put a pin in that. Maybe we could integrate that in the, the text. Let's... Uh... Yeah, let's play with some fonts. Okay, anything standing out? Let's have a look. This is like speed running design, isn't it? I mean, I do love a good ampersand. And if there's a way I can kind of... Ooh, that's fancy. What is that? Bella Quetta. Let's put a pin in that. Yeah, if there's a way I can kind of nest that ampersand in with the letters. So, do you know what I mean? Like, if I smush these together, is there a way I can kind of get that in there? Oh, you know. Problem with that is, you know, we read left to right, at least in the Western world, and and grind shine doesn't really make sense. Grind and shine, yeah, maybe. Or we could write the word and. And we could kind of nest that down in here, maybe. Or we could slap a plus in this gap here. This is how I kind of um, like to work. It's not, not just good for logos. It's good for titles and typography in general. Grand shine. Eh, it's all right. Could do the plus there. Grind and shine. Yeah, maybe. Got a bit of an odd gap there. And this is all um, title case. So, obviously, if the letters were in uppercase, it would look a bit different. But <clears throat> sometimes when you are working with title case, because you have the upper and the lowercase letters, you can kind of nest things together quite nicely. That could be quite nice. Oh, I love music. Music and design is just like the absolute win. Blenny Black. Someone suggested this font before. I will use that at some point. I need to use it for something. Make the ampersand the handle of the coffee mug. Ha. Like I said, it ain't a, it ain't a straight line process. A very uh, ornate. <laughs> oh, could that work? Yeah, maybe if I kind of cut this part of the ampersand a little bit, so it's not so... Um, it doesn't kind of continue so much. Um, how do I get the grind and shine in there, though? Do you know what I mean? Like that, okay, yeah, I could make that work, maybe. But how does that sort of fit together as a... a graphic, you know? Dansky, how would you make that font your own by modding the letter shapes that that might be what we what we do um 
and it's good as well because i think i've said this before like you know for me to kind of go and design a typeface from scratch now um not only takes me a lot longer and is a lot more challenging but if i was doing something like this for example there's a lot of um, nuances to typography and lettering that i just don't know it's not what i do so i would probably make a lot of mistakes however if i kind of took a font and i said oh yeah i like this font this is really cool but there's a few things i don't like about it i could then go and customize that and tailor it and obviously that's a really good way to circumvent a lot of those uh, typographical mistakes you might make but you still get something that's kind of custom you know sometimes it is a case of just you know you're doing this and you're like you find the right font and you're like yeah that is an absolute win You don't need to do any modifications or anything. Oh, that's quite nice. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes they nest together really nice. Could I stagger this maybe? Grind and shine. Uh, it's a bit too, bit too offset there. Uh, suppose you could do that. Uh, that could work, maybe. As you can see, I've got, I'm still on like, we're only on the letter C in going through my fonts. So this could take a while. But we'll try and whip something up quickly. Hmm. Ooh, Cormorant. That's quite elegant. I wonder if I could. Oh, Avenged Sevenfold is so good. Such good music. Okay, let's just uh, let's just try something. I wonder if <laughs> this might not work. Dude, dude, dude. Hey, maybe, I don't know. What do you reckon? Hello, amazing streamer, Liam. <laughs> Liam is, uh, Liam Cleaves is our PT and our good friend. And uh, we had our PT session with him this morning, actually. First time back after many weeks off. It was, uh, it was good. Actually, it was all right. It was, yeah, I thought it was going to be really, really hard. But no, it was a it was a good session, I think. Really good. Poppy's like, Liam! Ooh, okay, yeah. Let's try that as well. I'm a, I'm a streamer now, Liam. <laughs> the worst streamer in the world. Like, we start the stream, and the screen's black, and everyone's like, yeah, Dan, uh, you do realize that the, the screen isn't actually, isn't on, like. <laughs> yes, that is that is a very good shout. Um, big Jim stream, yeah, that is a very good suggestion. Sometimes you, you do get these, you know, you get these little wins where the letters line up, the stars align, as it were. And this might be... Really nice. Couple of good, good ideas here. And we're gonna we're gonna grab you and extend you up. Direct selection tool. If anyone wants to know how I just did that, I just select those individual anchor points and I can extend them. Oh, oh, look at that! 
Look at that. And the beauty here, right? The beauty here. If I just uh, create some boxes. Look at that. That is a that is a a happy accident, a lucky win right there because the text is centrally aligned. Sometimes you'll kind of get this and it'll be ever so slightly off and it's like, oh, if it just... And there's no way you can work it. Do you know... Oh, right. Okay, hang on. Hang on. Let's get these over here. In the interest of time, I think we're going to go with one of these. Right, oh, we got an and. Hmm. Oh, we got to get an and in there somewhere. How are we going to do that? Maybe. Where's my um, editable font? So another way to get around the kind of the issue of like, you know, letters colliding with each other is you could make them capitals not always what you want you know you might not always want them to be capitals because it could be like very <laughs> loud and shouty oh but i got different weights so now this one's smaller i don't want it to be so thin and brittle so i might chunk this one up so it feels like it fits with the rest oh music is the best Yeah, so that gap, that gap is bugging me. That's where I think this one maybe. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hang on, Dan. I wonder. <laughs> Let's spell correctly. I wonder if. Oh, it might just. It might just nip out the end there. Do you see what I mean? This is what I'm talking about with nesting words together. The descender doesn't collide with anything. Yeah, we got got that gap there, but let's see if we can. Uh, we can get this to work. This will be not bad for 20, 30 minutes if we can. Oh, that's difficult. Yeah, I think there's definitely potential here with, with all of these. What does a lowercase g look like? Ah, of course, yeah. Of course it looks like that. I should have expected that, really. Yeah, I don't know. I think it uppercase might be the one. Depends. Yeah, see, ah, yeah. We're going to have a bit of a collision issue there. Unless I did that. And the G, see, with the uppercase, it looks fine, but the lowercase G, we're kind of almost nestling that together with the S. Ah, but then we've got the dot on the I colliding with the N, which isn't ideal. Hmm. Although the other letters, there's a f quite a few letters here that do line up. So I don't know if I'm going to get a bit carried away here. Just get rid of the eye, maybe. Or uh, do I be really cheeky and take that up into the N as well? Or is that a bit much? I don't know. I'm not sure. That might be a bit naughty. And does that become really hard to read? I'm not sure.
This is where we've got to be careful as designers that we don't sort of get carried away with an idea. We know what it we know what it says, but then someone else looks at it and goes, what, what does that say? I've got no idea. Make a plus sign in the center. Oh! Oh! Mushy Moo! <laughs> I think... <laughs> That might tick the symmetry box. Oh, you absolute legend. The descender of the lowercase g looks like an S. Let's have a look. Hmm. Yeah, it might have been getting a bit carried away there. This one's interesting, though. Take the shine dot out and make the dot in grind a bean. And draw a little coffee bean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, maybe. I, uh, I'm just, I'm not a fan of putting parts of logos on dots of eyes. I think maybe I've just seen it too many times. We'll keep the coffee bean or whatever that is. Um, ooh. I'm, yeah, I, I'm looking at ways to get the plus in now. I do like that. Rebecca says, I love that plus sign element. Yeah. In is shared by both words. Can you do something with that? Oh, goodness me. Ugh, the ideas are flowing. Okay, yeah. We'll put we'll put a pin in the plus sign cuz I like that as well. I like that and it keep it you know, it's a bit of a a, a lucky win there that you've kind of got the symmetry. And if I made the plus a different color, you know, the words are still very clearly legible. But yes, you are right, Big Jim. Big, Big Jim stream. The I and the N do line up. So what could we do with that? Um, I don't know if this will work or not. <laughs> Maybe turn that into a coffee machine somehow. It's a similar shape, isn't it? Unless... Yeah, I think I... the I and the N is a bit too much. But if I uh, take the I and copy that one, we'll go back to regular I and then focus on just the N. We could turn that into a coffee machine. Maybe. And we could fit we could fit something in there, an and, and that does kind of alleviate the problem of having these random gaps. The problem is now that if I want to add like a coffee machine in there, for example, uh well one, I don't have a lot of space. I gotta go back to this and sort of look at these details. Is there anything I can pull from here? And um, obviously this kind of, the line width here is very much like an icon. It's all the same width. Whereas this is a serif typeface that I'm using. So any kind of illustrative elements that I'm going to add here, I feel like they need to mirror the style of the lettering. 
thick, thin, that kind of thing. So, how am I going to do that? I think the bar on the plus sign should have the serif parts. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right, Raz. Uh, N is a French press. Oh, fun fact with the Reese there. Nice. Oh, we're still going, Rin. We're still going. The ideas are flowing thick and fast. Like a way to put off the cafe from the machine. I don't have a lot of space to work with either. And I wouldn't stretch it out because it would kind of muck up the uh, the kerning on the lettering a little bit, I think. And I don't want to go too heavy with it as well. So I've got to pick the details that I'm going to add really carefully. So down here, could I connect these together to form the bottom of a mug or a cup, perhaps? Yeah, I've got to be careful with the amount of detail I'm adding, because if I add too much, it's going to look a bit overkill. Or we could represent coffee. You know, like you get like a, a latte or something and you get the... Mm, no, yeah, I think, yeah, it needs the bottom. It needs to have a bottom to the cup or the container, whatever it is. Or we custom draw, we, we kind of... Mm. Could customize the serifs a little bit. I'm just thinking like of bringing them in, but then doing it like this. This is obviously very crude, but do you see what I mean? Making it more of a cup shape, but modding the serif on that inside quite heavily. You could get away with that actually. But then I've just got to think how I'm going to. It needs to be a good cup. That doesn't look like a cup. So I'd need to kind of cut a cup shape out of here. Could I do that? Do you see what I mean? See what I'm going with there? Just a couple of subtle details and you've got a coffee cup at the bottom of the coffee machine. And it's, do you know what I mean? It's subtle. It's not too much. Negative space, yeah. Oh, nice. You're promoting the course, Poppy. Excellent. There we go. Yeah, it would be nice if we could do something clever with negative space. And it's like I said as well, I'm keeping it subtle and thick, thin. It'd be nice to mirror the styling of the lettering. So I may, I could maybe thicken that up at the bottom. Could even add a little accent if I was being really cheeky. Do you know what I mean? Just to kind of really sell it as a a little cup. Hmm, might be a bit much. No, a bit much. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like this is the bit that I would need to really work on. The and getting that in, that's easy now. It's really doing something with this N. And it needs to be good. <laughs> it can't be terrible. Oh, 
wonder, I wonder. Wonder. I wonder, wonder, wonder. I'm just trying to think how I can kind of make this less of a flat line and a little bit more, just a bit more illustrative. Do you know what I mean? Or... Just to go a bit more crazy. What about... Oh, wait, no. Um, was it Re Reese and Josie said about a droplet? A droplet of some description. What if... Something like that? I mean, you know, liquid, coffee... Droplet could work. You'll like this Kai if you're still here. Boom, look at that reflectal. Nice, so easy. I did that all myself as well then. Didn't even need prompting. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Maybe. What about if we go even bigger on the old negative space? I'll kind of do something like this. Yeah, it probably needs to come down a bit more to make it into more of a droplet. Oh, excuse me. Oh. oh, there's definitely an idea here. It might just be the kind of thing that needs a bit more time working on it. Because what I could do as well to kind of retain the thick thin of the serifs is I could do something like this with the cutaway. And obviously I could then redraw this so it lines up smoothly. Uh, we'll thin that down. So we're sort of tapering that end off. Have that line up with the water drop, which would be lush. Do you know what I mean? Like, it would look quite elegant. I bet you was like, no! <laughs> the cup should have the steam looking like an ampersand. Oh, maybe. Yeah. It's okay. It would make a big mug work. Like, flip the E for shine to be the coffee holder. Yeah, maybe. I see what you're going for. You could sort of bring that in, and it's sort of like a... But then I have to move the position of the E. Um, unless... Unless I were to kind of do something like that. But then I'm continuing the E, and I don't know if that's going to look a bit weird, you know? Because 
because all the other letters are separated and then I'm kind of continuing the E. I'm not sure. You can put the mug in the middle of the bars and a diagonal position and one of the bars of the N can be the coffee going down from the mug. Oh my goodness, so many ideas. We need to get a whiteboard session in so we could all just sketch out ideas. That would be fantastic. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at look for coffee cup icon. This is where I might get some ideas for shape inspiration. There we go. Just like this one here. You see the way that kind of flows and you've got the handle curving around? So it's very useful to just kind of look at different ways, different cup shapes, different ways that coffee cups are visually represented. Yeah, this one as well. It's a nice little... I quite like that, the way the sort of cup, the shape of the cup continues into the swoosh. So how does it go kind of up there? And sort of round like that. And we don't need to really worry about the sort of detail at the minute. I, I don't know, maybe. I don't know how it looks a bit weird. We're just sort of literally, like, obviously all this is terrible, scrappy work, but it doesn't matter. It's just getting the, the raw idea. Yeah, maybe. A nice little bit of negative space use in there. It's subtle. I miss this fun. Oh, it's good to have you back, Josie. It's really good. I missed it for two weeks when I wasn't well as well as well. Well, as well. Maybe the and is a drop. Yeah, did someone else mention that as well? Let's grab that, that ampersand wherever I've stuck it. I mean, my plan for that was to stick it there, but I don't know. Hmm. Could nest it there, actually. Hmm, no, it was a bit weird. But then it is kind of like, okay, have I gone too far down this idea? Do I need to go back to this? This clearly worked. So it's always good to kind of, you know, you sort of branch off from the original idea and then you sometimes end up going so far that it's like uh, you sort of get lost in it a bit. So it's sometimes good to sort of check yourself. And what if I were to continue that flow, actually? So something like that on the other side. Do you see what I mean? And again, I can kind of play around with the width tool, so it's sort of tapering off.
Do you see what I'm going for there? I don't know. Let's try and take what I just did. I think the tapering is quite important as well because it sort of mirrors the aesthetic of the letters. I just want to try and see if I can use this with the original letters. I suppose this, this is more like a mug and I'm just tampering with the letters less. Yeah, the coffee. the coffee bean idea seems popular. Add one more thing. Invert your E to 90 degrees and try to make a cup out of it. Let's have a go. Huh. Yeah, it does affect the legibility of it, though. i got to be honest. My, my gut instinct is telling me that there is potential here. Even though I've just roughly drawn this in and it's it's very very scrappy, do you know what I mean? Like the line work is is it needs work. Like if I if I were to design review myself, it would be merciless. <laughs> um, what am I doing? Yeah, just just leave it alone, Dan. Leave it alone. But even just doing that kind of tells me that that it's enough. And I don't even think it. You you could kind of mess around with the serifs and like a customize them to make it more cup shape but if i can leave them alone and still get that looking like a mug you know it could be onto something there and i could even oh i mean i mean yeah using negative space like this is always nice if you can get it to to work I'm sorry I'm not able to try out everyone's ideas. I do appreciate all the, the fantastic suggestions. Yeah, so again, I'm just, like I say, we're just fudging this to sort of get a real flavor for how this could look. And I could even do another one and have that kind of curl up. So let's just trim that short. Do you see what I mean? And then have it kind of curl up into a... I mean, actually, just, you know as a totally to go a totally different direction with it let's do the cup and the loop round and then we'll have the thing and then we'll have that just to do something uh, totally different that disregards all the effort we've put in If I were to go for like a simplified coffee mark. Yeah, I mean, even that is an idea. Look, Dan, I love you and you're fantastic, but I'm going to go and watch my Korean drama now. <laughs> Poppy's obsessed with Korean dramas. <laughs> That's another good point, Rian. Yeah, we haven't even explored that idea yet. Is the idea of adding how, how do you visually represent shine in a logo? Like you say, it could be rays, it could be... Yeah. It could be so many different ways. It looks like a person's head with a weird hat. 
Oh no. Yeah, it needs refining. It could make that look more like a coffee cup. Yeah, I feel like there is a really good idea there. I just haven't I just haven't fully I haven't figured it quite out yet. I feel like there is a better idea. With some refining though. Let's just grab any old sans serif font and we'll just there we go. We'll just grab this one over here. Just as another another potential candidate, just so we have something else to explore as well as this uh, sort of layout here. Yeah, obviously very, very rough, but uh, worth exploring. So that would be like another offshoot that I could go and play around with. Yeah, I do like this one. In fact, no, do you know what I would do? Do you know what I would do with this? Oh, I might even... Because we're doing... I'm adding the coffee into the crazy long N... But the problem is there's two N's, so I can't add it to both of them. But there is an H. There's an H over here on its own that's looking uh, like it wants a bit of attention. So we could actually go and stick the coffee cup in the H instead. Let's try and smooth that out a bit. Oh, this is good fun. This is good fun. Thank you for joining me today. This has been really, really good fun. As always, I love doing these. Yeah, maybe. There's potential there. It's a bit it's a bit stumpy. I might have to um adjust the height so we can get a little bit more of cup in there. Or maybe just get rid of that one actually. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's it. We just get rid of that. Or <clears throat> just playing around with this again. Could this loop into the H? And then we could use a wee bit of negative space. Oh, that was a terrible shape. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, Actually, that's made it look like a really weird shape. <laughs> Maybe not, but, you know, I think there could be potential here. And this could even kind of come down a bit more. If you, if I wanted something more mug-like, I'd bring that down a bit more. But I quite like the elegance of the, the flow. So let's just kind of say I'm going to explore this one. Got to get a plus in there somewhere, or an and. Hmm. Do 
It's really difficult. It's really difficult. Can I share a link so you can see an awful sketch of what I mean? Yeah, sure, Tommy. Um, if you send it to there, I'll uh, I'll see if I can open it. Oh, wow. I've just had two people sign up to the course during the stream. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, fantastic. Oh, it's the, it's the best email to get in, um, in my inbox when someone uh, enrolls in the course. It's like, yes, new student. I love, uh, I love teach. I love getting emails from students when they kind of, <laughs> sounds bad, but I love it when they have a problem or they get stuck because it's, it's just, I get to help people and it's, it's, it's nice. It's uh, definitely a good feeling, sort of knowing that you're um, helping someone uh, develop their skills and stuff, you know. I've always loved that. I've always loved kind of solving problems. And um, I used to kind of be the guy at the office that when I, but years ago when I had a job where if someone had a problem, I was like, yes, I'm straight there, you know. Yeah, maybe I'm going to play with this a bit more. It's like been two and a half hours now. And my throat's getting a bit sore from me kind of yammering on. So I might I might leave it here for now. But maybe we could pick this up in the next stream because I really like where this is going. And there's so many different ideas and kind of like offshoots and things. Like You see what I mean? Like the process is never a straight line. Like we started here just laying down basic coffee machine and, and cup shapes. And then um, Moosh said grind and shine, and that was it. Fonts, found a nice one. Letters linked together. And then all of a sudden, you know, in the last, what's it been, hour or so, we've just, we've ended up here. Um, so, uh, okay, hang on, let me just check. Yeah, okay, I, I see what you mean, Tommy. Sorry for the awful sketch. <laughs> Sorry for the awful sketch I made in paint. Hang on, hang on. I gotta, I gotta get this up. Tommy, it's literally, it's honestly, man, it's like, it's like me drawing with a trackpad. I just, me drawing. If you've ever joined the streams before, me drawing with a trackpad is just hilarious. I just, that's why today I was like, uh, we could end up drawing something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with the pen tablet. So again, yeah, I see what you're going for. So you've brought the kind of the top of the mug and the rim. You have brought it up a lot higher in the end. Yeah, I mean, the, the letters here, I'll keep that to one side, actually. Yeah, it's been a bit of a... It's been a, a, a fantastic accident because, you know... Not only do the two words sit centrally, but the eyes line up pretty much perfectly. The two ends line up perfectly. Yeah, I, I've got to be honest, Moosh. That was a fantastic suggestion for a brand name. It's not only a fantastic name, Grind and Shine, amazing. But the way that the letters in this font line up, oh, there's just so many, so many possibilities. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been really fun. I want to carry on, but I just, you know, I'm just conscious that I've been streaming for two and a half hours and uh, I just, I want to go and have a bit of chill time, if I'm honest, you know, it's it's been really, really good. I don't know how these streamers stream for like seven or eight hours and they just keep talking. I think I'd lose my voice. <laughs> the promos are working. Yeah, the promo for the course. Yeah, the promos must be working. Okay, well, we'll do one, we'll do one more segue. We'll see if we can get one more person to sign up for the course before the stream ends. So there's there's the course. It will teach you, uh, if you've enjoyed today, then it will teach you everything I know, all the different tools about kind of how to create these curves, what I'm doing, redrawing things. Uh, I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. That helps me move around a lot faster. And, you know, there's there's so many things covered in the course, all of these different tools that I didn't know for most of my career, if I'm honest. And I did a lot of things the hard way and it just didn't need to be that hard.
Um, case in point, using the pencil tool, totally underrated tool. And that's something that I cover quite a lot in the course is how you can use that to just freehand stuff. Um, for, for this kind of stuff, the more organic shapes, it's just easier than the pen tool. Like I very rarely use the pen tool. That's for me now, it's more like for logos if I'm not using basic shapes. But then again, it's like if I'm doing anything remotely illustrative or I'm doing a logo and I want, like this one, for example, I want my shapes to be maybe a bit more organic and less geometrically precise, I just use the pencil tool because it's just so much faster and easier. Um, and if you are interested in the course, then definitely don't forget to sign up here because you get a code for 15% off the course as well. Um, and uh, and yeah, as well as the community and, you know, answers to your questions, you can basically send me your work in the community if you've got questions and I'll give you feedback. So do you show the graph tool in the course? Yes, absolutely. Um, we cover specifically how to do bar graphs with data. And uh, I think there's one bit where I do pie charts as well. So I do a pie chart and it's two dimensional. But then we combine that with 3D and make it into a 3D pie chart. Um, like it doesn't go crazy in depth with in depth with data visualization, but it shows you how you can input data, turn it into a graph, and then make that graph look a bit more attractive uh, than just the defaults. You know, so with pie charts, you can do you can integrate 3D and get some really kind of, especially with Illustrator's ray tracing feature. That's where I think the the 3D tools can really shine is making those um, things like pie charts just a bit more interesting with a bit of depth. It made me think of the 5am club. It's on my list. Oh, I mean, that is an amazing book. Granted, it's probably the only book I've actually read cover to cover in my adult life, but it's a fantastic book. Cheers, uh, Big Jim Stream. Thank you so much. There is no easy letter to integrate into a mug. It would it would be uh, easy with an O, a U or a D. I mean, yeah, like a U. A U would be an absolute win. I don't know. Maybe we could change the brand name. Although I kind of feel like that's cheating. You know, when you get like a real client, you can't just say, oh, do you know what? I've got a really good idea. Could you just change your entire company name just for me? Um, so I think it's good that we we kind of have the name that's locked in stone and then we have to just work with that um otherwise i feel like we're just cheating we'll just we'll just change the brief it's fine draw the coffee cup on the e yeah <laughs> i mean you could try that with a client tommy i suppose i don't know maybe if they were a startup and you did a banging logo you could say to them hey how about we how about we pivot and we change your your brand uh, the brand name i don't know might work yeah the e the e could lend itself to a coffee cup i feel like yeah i think someone said that earlier as well in an ideal world i know right um yeah i, th I think a lot of these letters they do have that potential just looking at them now actually even like the G. You see a coffee. Well, actually, no, that doesn't look like a coffee cup. That looks like the kind of thing that you kind of put gravy in and dispense gravy. <laughs> like a like a gravy serving dish. But yeah, you could probably turn that into a coffee cup of some sort. Or you could probably have a little droplet in the S. Oh, I mean, there's so many ideas. I think it's just the way the kind of the letters of um, it's all just sort of landed, really. These shapes do have a lot of potential. I'm, just, I'm seeing mugs in everything now. Like here, I'm seeing a mug. We'll just pop a handle on that there. Here, we've got a coffee cup. There we go. <laughs> it's just, they're everywhere. <laughs> right, I got it. We're just going to add a rim and a handle to every single letter. That is... That is going to be the design. But yeah, no, I like this. It's, um, it's cool. I'm, I'm going to play around with that off camera later on and um, see where I get to. That would be a fun one to pick up, actually. Not bad for an hour's work, though.
<gasps> right. Time to rest my brain. She works more as a gravy boat. It looks like a magic lamp. Yes, Zach. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Thank you so much, guys. I've had a fantastic two and a half hours today. Um, I'll be back next week for design review as always. So, yeah, have a fantastic rest of your week and um, have a fantastic weekend as well. Oh, I'm going to go and get some chicken now. <laughs> oh, have a good one, guys. Cheers.